what we're doing today is closing out the gable vents to seal the attic. Now the purpose for doing this is to increase the envelope of the insulated area of our house. So right now we have the regular blown in insulation above uh, the ceiling of the second floor and above the ceiling of the third floor, which is over to my left, your right, is the movie room. You have gable vents that let supposedly cool air in to kind of cool the attic. We also have a ridge vent and then we have soffit vents down at the bottom. Now just research those online to see uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with the terminology. And that'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Gable vents are not really needed in a house like this. Um, when you have soffit vents and ridge vents especially, but also down in the south, uh, having a vented attic is not as important as it is up north. So if you remember uh, the video where I started the movie room, where I started tearing down walls, tearing down the ceilings, well, we had bats. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll try to post it here. Maybe I can figure that out so you can see that video. Now, the video is about all the teardown process, what I started, and I got really scared thinking, man, I tore all these walls down. I decreased the value of my house. Now, what do I do? I got kind of nervous about the whole construction thing. If you get nervous about doing a big project, that's normal, okay? Don't worry about it. Now, what I did was I had to get rid of the bats. So I did tons of research, had the little brown bats, I think they were called, and I ended up screening the gable vents because that's where they were coming in. But I put a one-way door or a funnel on the gable vents so at night the bats could get out, but then they couldn't get back in. I should have made a video on that. I wasn't doing videos yet. Basically, that's what I did. I screened everything in, uh, metal screens on the outside, and all the bats got out. Now we're bat free. Um, a year and a half later, we don't have any more bats. What I would like to do is eventually get to the point to where I could take those metal screens off the outside of the house. Now you can't see them. Our house is so tall. We've got 40 foot gables, 40 foot off the ground on both sides. And then the one in the front is probably about 25 feet up in the air. So you can't really see them unless you look really hard. But eventually I don't want them to start rusting and make the house look bad. So what I'm doing today is I'm taking half inch OSB, which I already had, cutting them to the size, and from the inside, I'm screwing them up to the inside part of the attic to close out the gable vents, and that way we won't have any chance of critters coming in ever again. So we're gonna put those pieces on, screw them in, and then I'm gonna seal with uh, canned foam, great stuff, all the way around to make sure it's sealed really well, and then eventually I can take those screens off and know that we're not gonna get bats in here again. You always want to make sure that you work safe. Safety glasses, respirator, dealing with insulation, long sleeves, gloves, and to help yourself out, get you a little bag like this to hold your washers, screws, tape measure, and your phone. See, I got a text message from my wife. You always want to make sure you have your phone to always answer your wife. Now I got two missed texts while I was filming earlier, so I'm already in trouble. Let me answer those real quick. Also, oh boy. Also, get you some three quarter inch plywood where it'll reach all the way across the ceiling joist you don't have to worry about stepping through your ceiling. Make great work platforms, but you still gotta be careful because you don't wanna end up like Clark Griswold in the attic scene of Christmas Vacation. If you haven't seen it, you need to check it out. <laughs> Almost fell. I can't remember which way it goes. There we go.
Well, what a mess. <clears throat> if you've never been in an attic, it's very difficult, very hard work. If you physically cannot do it, then I suggest you start talking to people and try to find somebody that can do the work for you. But don't just call some construction guy to come without knowing them. Because, uh, I mean, you could end up spending a bunch of money. One of the purposes of this channel is to help you save money. Start talking to friends and family and people that may know how to do this. Or uh, if you already know how to do it, you do the research. Find somebody young in your family, uh, in their 20s preferably, that can crawl all through an attic. It won't even bother them. And pay them. You're helping somebody out in your family. You're helping a close friend out. And you're still going to save tons of money. It's not rocket science. It's pretty easy to do these things. Now, I messed up and I thought I had a can of spray foam here, so you're not going to see me do that. But that's pretty simple too. I gotta go back to Home Depot after I just went there this morning and get another can of grape foam. So all I'm gonna do is spray around the edges to kind of seal it somewhat. And eventually all the walls of the attic, like the one behind me, it's gonna have the foam board insulation on it as well. So that the walls of the attic, the roof line below the rafters of the attic and all is gonna be insulated. Now don't say you can't do this job because it's too hard or uh, I don't think I could figure something like that out. Don't use those excuses either. You can do it. It's difficult. It's not fun. I got sweat rolling all down and it's March. I mean, in August, it's going to be horrible. So don't wait till August. All right, do it in the spring, in the winter time, preferably. But don't use the excuse that you can't do it and go finance a construction guy to come do this stuff for you. Do it little by little as you have the cash. This is Wes telling you to keep your money in your pocket by doing it yourself. Have a great day.